And his first pitch tonight is inside and it hits Ronald Acuna Jr. And naturally the boos rain down from Truist Park. Of course we have been down this road once or twice before. No one will. And well now you can uh, read the lips there. He's seen enough of it is what uh, among other things what Brian Snicker just said. All right Holly here's where you and I always get ourselves in trouble when we sit here and say there's no way that there was any intent there. But yeah. I mean come on uh, let's uh, listen I, I know what I know what Braves fans feel I know what we all think right when we see it it, it, it takes us back in time but we've got to be realistic here. We told you the numbers with Pablo we told you what he what he's dealing with when it comes to the Atlanta Braves. Do you think in the very first inning with the very first pitch he's trying to put himself in hot water. I mean you got to be kidding me here. Well, Jesus Aguilar doing his best to uh, cool the temperature over there. The Might I add one more thing real quick? I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't Please, mean to interrupt no, no. you. I, no, I, right I, I would add this. We know Pablo better than anybody else around baseball, better than Braves fans or anybody else is paying attention. They that's, just threw him out of the game. It's not even possible. They just threw him out of the game? That Pablo is unbelievable. It really is. Th that's, that's unbelievable. Without a warning issue, how could you throw them out of the game? And now Mel Stottlemyre Jr.'s out there standing up for his guy. Donnie's hot and has all the reason to be fired up. Andy Fletcher tonight is the home plate umpire. Dan Iasonia is the crew chief. Scott Barry's the first base umpire. He's in there as well. John Lipka, the third base umpire, is in there. Th this is, uh, listen. It, we're not stupid. We understand that there is absolutely history here and we can go back and forth and anybody watching this uh, neutrally or from a Braves perspective would probably disagree if we said that some of those times whether it was Urania or whoever there was in no intent on some of those occasions from our perspective. You can disagree at home. That's fine. We'll get killed for it online. That's fine. This is ridiculous. You know. Uh, one Tom, of them would have been nice. Up, but it's, you either get the low ones or you get the high ones, and apparently you don't get either of them. Tom is not having one of his better days, and he's hearing it from the Sox dugout. you got to get one of those. This inning should have been over twice. Get out of here. And Tom Hellion just get thrown somebody from the White Sox dugout out of the ball game. To me, that's an overreaction when you've just missed two calls. And here comes Tony La Russa to defend his guy. Like, here's the thing, the umpire doesn't know that they missed the call. I believe it's Ethan Katz that was thrown out. I think Tony came out and he said, you missed two pitches and you're going to throw him out? Look, you're in the jackpot if you know you missed the call and you deliberately call it wrong. Hallion doesn't know he missed the call. That's the whole point. Ethan Katz one of the most soft-spoken guys you're going to run into. Now La Russa probably asks, why do you throw him out? Hallion says, I warned, he knows he can't do it, he did it anyway. This is where you're probably getting things from more than one person on the bench. Hallion chooses one person, not a player, but a coach, and throws the coach out. Players stay in the game. Tom missed two calls and then threw out the Sox pitching coach. Yeah. This inning should have been over twice. Ethan Katz, who's a very soft-spoken pitching coach, one of the most analytical people out there, That's terrible, says Ethan. And well, he's I, right I, about that. Yeah, actually. I think. Look, the second. So here we go, three and two, brothers. Deal. Oh my! A little bit low, said Nick Lentz. Somebody and caught. go ahead, run. Rossi just got run. I think Rossi saying, "You let him talk you into that." Nine games of frustration built up. If Joe's body language is so bad, they're dismissive. Rossi's going to keep making his point. And Joe tries to waltz him back to the dugout. I mean, it's it's a borderline pitch. Might have been down a little bit. 
But what a comeback by Brothers after falling behind 3 0. He made three quality pitches, and this one certainly could have been called a strike. David Ross ejected. Right to the shortstop, backhanded, and get Johnson in a rundown. They got to run him all the way back. And they do, but getting in there safely is Hernandez, and they call him out on a double play. Now, wait, did he come off the base? Did he call them both out? There's, there, they, you got to be. He's explaining to Tito what went on. Wait a minute. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my hunch tells me that Tito was okay until the third base coach stuck around and continued the argument. Because the third base coach continued, I think Tito gets worked up. Because I think that Hoy would have sold this call if it was just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I think that Tito went off with the coach's energy. Because what Hoy is explaining is that when two runners are occupied with the base, and you're going to read his lips in a second and he's going to say the exact same thing, the trailing runner is out when tagged, not a force play. The lead runner was then out because the lead runner voluntarily broke contact with the base and then was tagged while off the base. Look at Hoy's lips. So again, Hoy tells Francona, both runners on the base, both tagged. That means that the trailing runner is out. I don't know why the lead runner came off the base, but because he came off the base, he was out when tagged. Tito and third base coach come up with well, you called the lead runner out. That's why he came off the base. And it's the umpire's fault that the lead runner came off the base. We'll go to the replay in a second, but here's an ejection. Not going well. And Tito has just been ejected. Oh, man, I have never seen Tito this fired up since he has worn an Indian's uniform. Nationals lost Kyle Schwarber. Now the third base umpire... Dan Bellino is over it. And he's talking to somebody in the Giants dugout. And Gabe Kapler is taking up the conversation. Well, it could be Jose Alvarez who's still upset about the strike zone he got from plate umpire David Rackley. He still could be chirping down the runway. But at any rate, Dan Bellino had had enough. It was Bellino that checked Alvarez as he walked off the field for stick him on his glove, his hat, his belt. The whole time he was having a conversation with Alvarez as he was given David Rackley. Yeah, so speaking to that point, Dan Bellino comes from third base to do the inspection. Sort of distracts the pitcher, game management there, when he sees the pitcher still going at the plate umpire, steps between them, rodeo clowning the game management long distance, of course, and saying, hey, you don't need to do that. Or maybe he said, can you believe someone actually greenlit these uniforms? In the air to left field. Yelich going back towards the wall. That ball is gone. A three-run home run for Nick Castellanos, his 18th of the year. And with one swing of the bat, the Reds take a 3-1. Frustration for Freddie Peralta. He wanted Remember, if it's a hollow white circle, the computer thinks the pitch was a ball. Parts after five plus, it's 3-1 round. While we were away, the council came out and was tossed from the game. It's really not that great of a clip that the broadcast showed. Notice how it starts with the umpire holding up the stop sign, warning the manager not to continue arguing balls and strikes. So something happened before this. This is just the tail end where the manager crossed the line. And by line, I mean the warning to stop arguing balls and strikes. Thanks to a three-run home run by Nick Castellanos. And here's a bunt down the third baseline. And it's a good one. The throw is going to be wild. Lelich will stop right where he's at. It's hanging to see if he made a move, and he did! Wow! John Lipka, first base umpire, said he made a baseball move to second base, and now he's going to be ejected. Everything I saw there is Quinn Berry, the first base coach, is trying to get in the way here. Yelich has been ejected. Was he just stopped running, never moved to his left? 
And India did the right thing, just supplying the tag to see if he did because he'd be out. And calling him out is John Lipka. You know what, Don? I saw a slight change of direction going towards second base. Okay. Well, that's what Lipka saw too. It's been a frustrating year plus for Yelich, and this is kind of boiling over now. Yeah, just the importance of the series will turn up the dial. Bench coach Pat Murphy. So now he goes down the line just that little bit Ooh, towards yeah. second base. Yeah. And you got to credit India just applying the tag. He was right on the line. It was that last little move. You're absolutely right. I just saw him stop. Yeah. That's enough. Wow. And you see Quentin Berry, the first base coach for the Brewers. I think you get Christian Yelich out of there earlier than that. He extends the conversation and the frustration. One of your best hitters gets tossed out of the ball game when you're down 3 1. Yelich was about to be the lead runner on here for the Brewers in the bottom of the sixth inning, but instead, he is out and credit India for having the presence of mind just to slap that tag on just in case. Well, it worked out to be more than in case. He's out and thrown out of this game. And did he go? They will check. Yes, he did, says Doug Eddings. And Votto is furious. That was ball four right there. And Votto has been tossed. So ejected by Doug Eddings after the strikeout. Jeremy lets me know about this ejection and says, just put up the hot head shark. Well, here it is. Probably have to update this because I think Votto moved up a few spots with his second ejection of the year, or not even at the All-Star break. So he was headed to the clubhouse, but then turned and came back onto the field. Brian Odora is going to come over and intercept him. So we've had uh, players ejected from both sides in this one. Seeing Votto approach the umpires in a different demeanor here strikes me as, and we also saw similar behavior with Votto's first ejection this season with the fan, and even prior to that, similar to a person who might not realize what they're doing during an emotionally intense situation in real time, might not realize the animated gestures, demeaning and degrading conduct, etc. As the camera captures Votto and then goes to Doug Ennings, his hand is out telling Votto to stop doing whatever it was Votto was doing, and Votto continues and Doug throws him out. Usually that gesture to the eyes towards an umpire is considered grounds for ejection, and it might be my predisposition toward grouping similar behavioral contrasts into certain schemas, but this reminds me of something I see in social work, and if you wish to connect those dots, go ahead, I digress, but more to the point. I would have loved to see a replay of the check swing call from the side angle that we've all grown so accustomed to. And again, a called strike three. He's thrown one breaking pitch after another. I know Brad's not happy with that call. I think he thought it was low and he's out of the game. He's just thrown out of the ball game. I, it looked like a pretty good pitch, Ruben. And Ronald Torres is trying to keep Brad Miller away. <laughs> a little bit of a mismatch. And Ronnie Torres trying to pull him off. <laughs> so he doesn't do anything ridiculous. But Brad is still livid. I think he's probably more upset that he got thrown out of the game than than the actual call because I'm not sure Brad Miller typically won't say anything too disparaging. Yeah. He can he can discuss it with him, but I'm not sure if it warranted him getting thrown out of this game. It was a very good pitch and was and was a strike. It, it was a strike. Yeah, no question. Uh, a little bit more video now coming your way. Uh, this is after the third out. Greg Gibson looking into the dugout, looking into the dugout. Charlie looking back at whoever was on the phone, and then Gibson waves it off. He said, that's it. That's too much time. And Robbie Ray heads back out to the mound. And now, obviously, Charlie Montoyo has started talking to Greg Gibson here. And Gibson, again, we're you know piecing some of this together. And he's saying, I gave you as much time as you're allowed. And... Charlie didn't like that and got tossed. A slider gets him and calls out of the jam, keeping the game tied. Red Sox bench is irate.
Remember the half swing's definition? Did he strike at the ball? Did the bat strike at the ball? Did it move toward the ball in an attempt to hit it? Your mileage may vary. Appeals board will look at it. Situation with the base is loaded. And that blow up in the Red Sox dugout did come with an ejection. The bench coach, Will Venable, was thrown out. And Kevin Plywicki, who was on the bench. What it was with all the waves offs, like the brush up? Like, yeah. That's the... They said to go, go, go. It's a fair ball! It's a fair ball! Oh my goodness! It's a fair ball! Do you believe this? It's still in play! Pirates score three! Oh my gosh! We've seen it all now! We've seen it all! Taiwan Walker! There goes Rojas. He might not be the first. He just bumped the home plate umpire. We have seen it all. Walker shoveled the ball away and it was fair. And the Pirates score three. Rojas incensed. It takes the whole crew of umpires to keep him away and some Mets coaches. You can't review it. The Pirates lead six to nothing. Now, what we could have, watch this. Now the umpires apparently on their own have decided to talk it over and now you'll see Derek Shelton go bananas. You can't challenge it, but they can talk it over. And Shelton will, he's ready to go crazy here if they change this call. Oh. Joe Madden for the 58th time in his managerial career has been ejected this afternoon. Started out a discussion with home plate umpire Bill Miller. It got progressively more animated. And Joe's still out there getting his money's worth. He has been ejected from the game. I got to imagine, Gooby, that it's the strike zone being discussed here, right? Because it, it has been a little, I'll say, erratic. Yeah, today. Oh, definitely. And a couple of times it's forced hitters for, you know, on his team in, in spots where they had to expand the strike zone because there were pitches called off the plate. This one got him. Marlins are asking for an appeal to see if he swung. First base umpire Corey Blazer said he didn't. But Davey Martinez much more concerned about the health of Alcides Escobar right now. Got him in the right arm, the back arm, maybe back elbow, funny bone. Forearm, wrist. Corey, but he doesn't want to get thrown out yet. Pitcher walks out with the horse and goes to the dugout with the horse. There's Richard Blyer. He's still talking to the umpires out there. Whoa. And he's just got run. I don't think he can do that. Corey Blazer, I'm pretty sure that's a no-no. Pretty easy call for the first base umpire there. He likes horses so much, Corey Blazer's treating him like one with that go command. Surely frustrated about giving up the game-tying run here in the sixth inning, but FP, this is our Hyundai Exmo. I, I don't know if he thought that Escobar swung. I don't know if he thought that he leaned into the pitch. Regardless, he's still chirping down there from the Marlins dugout. Chilt has just been ejected. This is live. And he was barking at home plate umpire Jeff Nelson. I would imagine, Ricky, part of this conversation was, look, they were barking on the other side about a pitch that you called a ball. That's the same pitch, and now you call it a strike. Yeah, there's nothing worse when you feel as if uh, you, uh, the umpire was manipulated into making a call. Here's the pitch setting up off the corner. It's off the corner by a couple of inches. Dylan Carlson, who does not argue very much, was uh, questioning the home plate umpire, and uh, he didn't like the response he got, and Mike Shope came out and met Dylan as he was walking back to the uh, Cardinal dugout and he got in front of him and he took over and he took over the argument and then even to the point of getting tossed here uh, between innings three in the top of the ninth for the Giants 4-2 to the bottom of the ninth Dodgers from up to one to down by two and Dave Roberts between innings was ejected 
Well, Max Muncy was chirping a little bit, and all of a sudden Dave got out of the dugout to protect Max, but then decided I'm going to finish the argument for him, and he's going to watch the bottom of the ninth from his office. Hoping the Dodgers can produce some magic again against the same guy they produced it against last night. Seven pitch from Jansen to Ruff. Did he go? No tie game. And Dave Roberts is losing his mind. He's thrown out. And he's going to go get his money's worth from first base umpire Ed Hickox. Ed saying no he didn't, no he didn't. That's a swing. It's where the bat travels. Yeah. That's a swing. You can look at the wrist and say the wrists don't break. That's not how it's done. It's done by how far the bat travels. You can swing a bat by twisting your hips and not breaking your wrists. Dave Roberts has a point. He walked him. 3 nothing Milwaukee on four walks in the inning and that ties a season high nine walks for the Sox. I think he wants to talk with John Lipka. Well, he's, he's talking to Dan Iasonia first. Good for Tony. I mean, look, there have been some some calls that could have gone the other way tonight that looked like they were in the zone and weren't called, and now Tony's going to get rung by Lipka. And I think when John goes back and watches, he'll realize there were some key misses here tonight. I think I Sonia is telling him those were balls, and Tony said, "I don't think they were." And Tony's right based on our strike zone. Good for him. And you got to go out there and sometimes when something's on your mind go out there you get rung up doesn't really matter that one right there I mean not calling that that's what I'm sure Tony was unhappy with will be in and uh, the comedian Jimmy Pardo huge White Sox fan is coming with his family I think they are just in the process of yelling at John Lipka from the Sox dugout. Called the strike on a pitch that was a good three inches down and out of the zone. Yeah, he's getting buried. Yep. Now he's going to scream back at the dugout. He can throw anybody out all he wants, but he's missed a bunch of pitches tonight. Yeah, this is one of those nights where John, who normally does a nice job behind the plate, he's not having a good night. The boys in the dugout were letting him know. That Tim's, wow, Tim does not think John Lucas' strike zone is very good. The word is terrible. Tim's fighting for his guys. I haven't seen Tim this upset in a while, but there's been some real bad calls. Now they want to make sure there's no suspension. So if he is thrown out. Now Miguel Cairo is giving it to Dan Iasonia, who came in from second base, Shelly Duncan. Is screaming at Lipka as well. Fires hearing it. 65 minute meeting during the rain delay to discuss that. It was a 99 minute meeting. Yeah, well, we didn't spend the whole meeting. Did we just get ejected here? We just got ejected. Was it Contreras or was it David Ross? I'm guessing Wilson. As Contreras goes into what did I do mode after getting called on some combination of profanity with extrapolated arguing of balls and strikes, umpire hears everything in an empty stadium, it's like a group of rowdy kids that get to play recess after being cooped up inside all day because it was raining, the umpire's like, I get it's a laid back atmosphere but I still don't want to be yelled at, you gotta calm down. This is one of those what I'd call stupid ejections, not that the player or the umpire is stupid, but that the player's not really upset about the zone, I don't think, but feeds off that post-rain delay blowout game delirium and yells at the ump, takes a little bit of a liberty, who hears it in an empty stadium, because it's empty, of course, 
and throws him out. I'll put it this way, if it was a packed stadium serious game, this probably doesn't happen this way. If I were to guess, I didn't get to see all of it, but he just, all he was yelling was, let's go, let something go. That's usually not going to get you ejected. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a borderline pitch, but yeah. Oh, really? Wow. One on one. No, it's inside. Yeah. I'm not gonna hear inside you. corner. Skip. Yeah, stick really? it to him. Go ahead. Really? Yeah. You're done. Oh, okay. Skip Schumacher just got tossed. All right. And he's going to come out and say some stuff now. Get your money's worth, Skip. Get your money's worth. Pat Miller, the crew chief, steps in between. Welcome back. While you were gone, Mike Schilt got his money's worth. He just went at the men in blue. There's a lot of lip reading here. I think John Boy is going to have some fun with this one. And if you missed it, hot because Dylan Carlson, beginning the third inning, grounded a ball to third. Great play by Freeman. Jump throw and foul ground, a one hop throw to the bag, called on the field out. Uh, I don't know if he actually got him. But by the time Mike Schilt asked for the replay, Felt like it had been well more than 20 seconds. Umpires conferenced and then said, no, we're not looking at it. Playing umpire Chad Fairchild was taken back to his childhood when uh, Cabrera had this little message for him. Wait for it, and it's coming. Hold on. Keep it rolling. Oh, they didn't keep it rolling. He kind of stuck his tongue out at him as na 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 kind of thing. And then he promptly was ejected from the game. He's played basketball when he's not pitching. And he gets a call again. Sneaks that one in the back door and strikes out Holt for the first out of the inning. And Holt not having it. He's not and he shouldn't. Now Brock oh, Holt getting tossed. tossed out of this game. But remember yesterday too he had a call go against him. That was pretty unfair. And so eventually you're going to pop. Oh, what is going to do? Oh boy. Well, you'd understand the frustration's a little high for all those guys in Rangers Blue. But I, on top of it, Timmons has been frustrating today. He has, and it's been both sides of the plate. You cannot open up both sides of the plate. We talk about the idea of getting a couple of inches here and there. But Brock Holt had a really good argument and good for Woody for being out there as well. Think about Curtis Terry earlier and a strike that was called against him. You can see where this one crosses the plate. Now where the glove ends it up. It didn't cross the plate. Or yeah, <laughs> where I would miss the plate. And then Martin Maldonado brings it back. And he is. He does a really good job. He's one of the best in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brock, you know, he's been around yeah. a little bit. He's trying. He's trying. And... He finally had enough. A lot of runs putting up 11 on the Astros tonight. And Rayleigh has just hit J.P. Crawford. Scott Service not happy. Somebody came out of the Astros dugout also. Omar Lopez, one of those out there. There was no intent behind that from Brooks Raley, but Scott Service taking offense to it. Lance Speaking McCullers out there. Dusty Baker out there. Raley hadn't pitched in a while and Showed his wildness getting ahead 0 2 and then walking a batter and then hung a pitch to Dylan Moore that was hit out and then hitting JP Crawford.
And now yeah. Rayleigh's just been tossed. After all that, why does he get tossed now? Because they're assuming something exists when it doesn't exist. This guy hasn't pitched since July 4th. He has shown he hasn't had command. Service basically got him ejected. That's what Maldonado's saying. No, and he's saying it's a breaking ball. Yeah. Why would, why are you going to throw at somebody with a curveball for a cutter? Cutter, I think. Yeah. Tries to check. Man. He checks and it's not called a strike as that clipped the corner. And now Scott's on the top of the dugout steps and he's letting him hear it. And now they appeal. And Hunter Winnelstead says that he doesn't go. And oh, now God. Scott just got run. What? Yeah. Wow. That was quick. And this has been a pretty emotional series. There's been a lot going on in this homestand, obviously. And Scott not happy at all. He probably knows, too, that Adam Beck has been squeezing. You say he's missed a bunch of pitches in the strike zone. In fact, I know he knows it. <laughs> and he just gave Hunter the heave home. Yeah, he did. Oh, there's been many. Been thrown out. Strike three. Wow. Wow. Gave him a pitch way off the strike zone. And Torres cannot believe it. It gets thrown out of the game. Not allowed to argue balls and strikes, but that was tough for Glaber Torres. That was clearly outside. And now Aaron Boone will have to talk things over. Called strike three. Mike Freeman is on to play third base because A. Eugenio Suarez got tossed during the pitching change. Check this out. All the Mets are on the mound, and Chris Siegel, home plate man, writing in the changes, heard something from the dugout. He believed it was Suarez who seemed to say it was not him, but he's out of the game. That's oh. strike three. Chase Tingler comes flying out of the dugout and he'll be ejected. Said the ball is down. Here's the thing Jace is right that you cannot argue balls and strikes and the Padres will leave them loaded. We'll get another look at this pitch. That's down. 